Broke out with four runs in the fifth and four more in the sixth to open up a seven-run lead. Rusty Crockett had a big triple. He drove in two runs. Lenny Bell, two for three in the ball game. A couple of RBIs. And he ripped this one. A triple for Lenny Bell. We'll go to the top half of the eighth inning, and Lenny Bell will lead it off for the Longhorns of Texas against the freshman Mike Oquist, pitching his second inning. Fastball hit high and deep to left field. Campbell going back on the warning track, makes the catch in front of the wall. Just got under it a little bit. Otherwise, Lenny Bell would have put that one out of here. Now hitters get a little more loose and relaxed as pitchers do when they have a big lead. They're going up there freewheeling right now. Look at the swing of Lenny Bell. Just missed getting a home run. He's already has a triple today. There's Rusty Crockett. Four. As I mentioned, since being inserted in the starting lineup, has played very well. 10 for 27. In seven straight games as a starter in left field for Texas. Junior from Crescent, Oklahoma. The loser of this game will play the loser of tonight's game between Stanford and Georgia in the second game tomorrow night. That pitch in the dirt bounces off the glove of Andy Skeels back to the screen. The winner of today's game will play the winner of the night game tonight in a winner's bracket game Tuesday night. So by tomorrow night, we will already have two teams eliminated from the 87 College World mm -hmm. Series. First game tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock Eastern time. Arizona State meets Florida State. Jim and I will have all the action for you. Crockett walks on four pitches. And he's got good speed. He's done a lot of running today. And the way Texas has been running, who knows? Arkansas go for more. Arkansas, Sam, excuse me, has had one inning today. And that's back in the third. They gave up a few hits, but that's the only inning they have not issued a base on balls. Brian Johnson has hit the ball hard. Last time he struck out on a breaking ball. But he's had two doubles. Fastball stays inside. Twelve walks issued in the ball game by the Arkansas pitchers. Four pitchers. John Sibahar has started. Ray Harris came on in the second. This is five pitchers now, I should say, for Arkansas. Runner fakes going. Tim Peters. Followed by Bob Edwards and now Mike Oquist. Peters relieved in the fifth, Edwards in the sixth. Both those right-handers would be available to pitch tomorrow. For the first. Crockett has to dive back in. Already know Monday night's winner's bracket game will be between Oklahoma State and LSU. Runner goes. Pitch is foul back. Way up high and out of the ballpark. And once again, Crockett on the move and just part of that philosophy of there never are enough runs in college baseball i think that's the reason because under normal circumstances this late in the game 13-6 you would not be playing for an extra run obviously you take it you'll take all you get but you're not going to go out of your way to hit and run or steal or manufacture a lot of extra runs with a seven run lead crockett dives back in crockett is one of those players who's on his own on the bases and Maybe just looking to steal and unnerve Arkansas. Again, part of the Southwest Conference rivalry between these two teams. If you come up to bat again, that's a good way to get a crease in your <laughs> neck doing things like that. Close. 
pretty good move by the right-hander Oquist. The ball over there in a hurry. Count is two and one on the catcher Brian Johnson as Rusty Crockett leads the way. One man out, top half of the eighth inning. Runner goes. Pitch taken. Skeel throw is there, and he's out. Ooh. Now, part of that, I believe, had to do with the fact that Oquist did a pretty good job of keeping Crockett close. He really did, and I'm, I'm not an advocate of throwing over to first base too often, but there you get a look at there. It's Oquist unloads the ball, skills with the ball up in the strike zone, easy to handle. And an accurate throw, and they got him. Kelly Zane putting the tag on him. Two men out now in the eighth inning, and the pitch to Johnson is fouled back. Count of full. Threw over there just enough and had Crockett on a couple of close plays there, as you mentioned, prevent him from getting that extra quick step. And that play so close that that half step or maybe a step that he might have taken extra on the lead might have been the difference between him being safer out. Really surprised to see Crockett stealing there with a seven run lead in the eighth inning. Johnson fouls another one back. But Gus is probably thinking back to that 23 to 12 <laughs> Oklahoma State Arizona State game in the 84 College World Series and we have I think as recent as a year or two ago, Maine held an eight-run lead. Arizona came. That was last year. Mm -hmm. Arizona That's came right. back and beat them. Seven to one ball game that Maine led going into the uh, seventh inning. Like Joaquin Andahar said, one word sums up this game. Yes. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long word. <laughs> we go to the bottom of the eighth. Texas leading 13 to six. Mike Oquist has pitched two shutout innings for Arkansas. Done a good job. Well, Texas protects the lead. They've got a seven-run lead. Pretty good odds that Cliff Gustafson will return to his hotel a winner. Got to like those. Got to like those percentages. <laughs> Cliff Gustafson was worried <laughs> about that out <laughs> there. That's the best of hogs. He's got a long way to go. <laughs> Cheering him on. But Gustafson was worried going into this game. He felt because of the fact that Texas had beaten Arkansas four out of five that Arkansas might be a little hungry, a little more intense than his players. But it hasn't been the case. Texas has handled it well. Pet Kaisek has pitched well and will go against Jim Phillips, who is pinch hitting to lead off the bottom of the eighth. Phillips, a junior from Texarkana, Texas. Hitting at 300. 28 hits and 70 at-bats this season. Nine home runs in those 28 hits. He's got some power. But Kaisek has pitched five and a third innings. Allowed four hits, two runs, only one earned. He's walked one and struck out three. And what a contrast to the Arkansas pitchers who have walked 12 in the game. But Kaisek settling down in relief of Garner and has walked only one. That's the secret. Get it over, keep it in the park, you got a chance. Missed outside, and in this, his sixth inning of pitching, he's thrown 81 pitches, 54 strikes, and 27 balls. They got him looking. Threw him a slider and surprised Jim Phillips. Fourth strikeout for well, Petkaisek. Little soldier boy there, bat on your shoulder. Tough to hit the ball that way. And you see the movement on Petkaisek's kind of a sinking, looked like a slider to start out instead of breaking in. It had that late break, but it broke back across the inside corner. Good movement. Hit hard by Scott Pose, backhanded by Lenny Bell. The toss to Petkaisek, two men out. Well, Bell likes those hard ground balls. Hey, Don't much, give me those little squibbers. Hey, much easier. To handle in those corkscrew spinners that were coming down. Well, I watched the footwork and the quick lateral movement right there by Bell. He's had a fine day in the field as well as a productive play uh, day at the plate. And just in case there's any trouble for Petkaisek, Texas has John Morton loosening up. mentioned the Arkansas-Texas rivalry and that Texas was a little uneasy 
about today's game. Another thing, Sam, is that Arkansas obviously not as bad a team as they've looked today. The reason they have looked so poorly today is the control problems their pitchers have had. And I really think that Gustafson was concerned about the law of averages, that Arkansas is a good ball club, and it's tough to beat a club four out of five. Two men out. Kelly Zane, the second baseman, is the batter. He's one for three in the ball game. Breaking ball is down in the dirt. Two men out in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Texas leading 13 to six. Hit hard. Nice play by Scott Kubal at third. And the side's retired. One, two, three for Petkaisic. He's now worked six and a third and allowed only one earned run. It's 13 to 6 Texas as we go to the top half of the ninth inning. Right now we're going to Boston Garden. John Saunders standing by with Casey Jones. John? In a sweltering Boston Garden here in the tunnels of it where it's been very wet. First of all, Casey Jones, I admire you. You kept your jacket on the whole game. But I want to tell you I admire your team more because we knew it was well coached. We knew it was a great, talented team. But as you said, they showed a lot of chutzpah today. Oh, no question about it. Uh, you know, with uh, Robert going out with the ankle and then coming back in again after being retaped, uh, Larry is going 48 minutes, uh, and then Kevin's up and down with a bad foot. Uh, you know, I watched part of the Detroit uh, game uh, last Thursday from San Francisco, and just so uh, it, it's hard for me to believe that these guys just hang in there like this. And that's what it takes is Hutzpa, you know, a lot of, a lot of guts uh, and a lot of determination. We got. Uh, we went out to five offensive rebounds and got them. We went after them. Yeah, we, did, we could have just set back. And then we put the three-point in, or Danny put it in, and that really took it out of uh, Detroit. And uh, then what happens, the fans just really went over the edge. I mean, uh, they just had noise. It was deafening, and that really, that really helped us. This series very nearly got away from you in game number five. Larry Bird took control on that instance. Once again, he took control today. He is, without a question, the man who makes this team go. Well, yeah, uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, it we found a way in a, in a fourth quarter to get him the ball where he had triple threat position, uh, room to shoot from outside, drive, make the pass. Uh, besides, he's doing the offensive and defensive rebounding, but uh, the man got the ball and just, just would not let us lose the lead. He did not let us lose the game the other night. Okay, as quickly the Lakers are coming up next. This is a series that everybody says uh, the winner of this series got the chance to get beat by the Lakers. Obviously, Casey Jones and the Celtics don't see it that way. Well, uh, we'll rest tomorrow, and uh, I'm, I'm just very happy to be in the finals, and the uh, same thing with the players. Okay, Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations on a terrific win in a very hot Boston Garden here. So the Celtics will go on to play the Lakers. We'll have more on SportsCenter. Right now, let's go back to the College World Series. Thanks, John. We're in the top half of the ninth inning, Texas. Leading 13 to 6, Alanis Westbrook to the plate for the sixth time of the ball game. Hits it high, deep to left center field, but playable. Rod Moore, the center fielder, is there to make the catch. Westbrook, two walks, hit by a pitch. And now one for three in six trips. And just in case anybody joined us late, Sam, then saw that mask and said, I wonder what he's doing wearing something like that. We talked earlier in the ball game about the serious injury Elenis Westbrook suffered playing second base in an inner squad game and his teammate Mike Patrick went back in there, caught him with the knee, shattered the eye socket, cheekbone. He's lucky to be back playing. This 25 games returned to the lineup in the Central Regional and is just starting to get back into shape and played a pretty good ball game. Here's Kobe Curlin, the shortstop, senior shortstop for Texas. He played in the College World Series in 1985. Was the leadoff man then. Took a lot of pitches, walked a lot. Has the all-time Texas record for walks. He added to it today with one. Gives him 250 lifetime. Good fastball. Mike Oquist, freshman right-hander in his third inning. The fifth Arkansas pitcher in the ball game. And a very down Arkansas dugout. They'll have to come back tomorrow night unless they can stage a miracle rally in the ninth inning. They're down by seven. 
Kurt Krippner, the All-America right-hander. And the reason he's throwing right now, we'll explain that after this pitch. Foul back by Curlin. If Texas lost, of course, they would have had to play tomorrow night. Krippner would be the pitcher. Now, it appears that they're going to win with a 13-6 lead in the ninth inning. They will not play again until, did you say, Tuesday That's night? Right. And so Krippner, having the extra days, wants to get the cannon loose. Mm -hmm. And now Garner, who started today and really didn't have it, knocked out in the second inning, walked four in the ball game. Curlin has struck out for the second time. And uh, Gardner now can come back uh, next week. And Kendall Trainer, a junior from Fredonia, Kansas, has moved into right field for Arkansas. Scott Pose, the right fielder, who started the ball game, has moved into left, and Dan Campbell has come out. Augustuson has a little, several ways. He got several options with uh, Garner having a poor performance today and Pet Kaiser looking very sharp after Tuesday's game might elect to put Garner in the bullpen in that game and come back with Pet Kaisek in their third game. Strong showing for Pet Kaisek. Six in the third innings. Four hits. Walked only one. And not surprising. I mean, he came into this ball game 13 and 2. So he's been effective all year long. This young man has got to be impressing Norm DeBryan, the freshman. Mike Oquist. Count is 2 and 0 oh on Brian Cesaric, who's 2 for 3 with two walks kind of innings he's getting in right here, Oquist as a freshman, but if Arkansas goes further into the series or gets back another year, this experience here will be very valuable to it. He could walk out on that mound in Omaha in another year or two and say, hey, I've been there. I know what it's <laughs> like to walk in the ball game. And not a complete shock to him. Of course, giving Texas a look at them for next year when they battle again in the Southwest Conference. Who knows, maybe even later in this tournament. No question, throw hard. He struck out three. This is his third inning of pitching. The three and one on Cesaric. Fastball foul back. And Oquist, the only Arkansas pitcher thus far who hasn't allowed a run. He started with left-hander John Sibahar. Left-hander Ray Harris came on in the second, then it was right-hander Tim Peters in the fifth, right-hander Bob Edwards in the sixth, and now Oquist in the seventh, and pitching here in the ninth inning. That was yesterday, wasn't it, that Sibahar <laughs> started? Stanford and Georgia, the second game of our doubleheader today, follows Sports Center. Change up misses. Cesaric walks for the third time in this ball game. That's 13 walks issued by Arkansas pitchers. The third walk issued by Oquist. Following this game, recap of all the sports news of the day. We go back to Sports Center and then out here, the Rosenblatt Stadium, where John Sanders and Joe Morgan will bring you the game between Stanford and Georgia. And of course, Tim Brando standing by alongside the dugouts. How about this guy hitting right here, Sam? Texas' most productive hitter on the year, 15 home runs, 78 RBIs. Doesn't have a hit today and the only Texas player without an RBI. Val tips it back. Count as one and one. You see that happen, you know, like if you follow a Yankee box score or whatever and they, and they score 15 runs, you say, well, I know Mattingly had, you know, four RBIs. Uh, and then you check and say, wow, isn't that unusual? 0 for 5 and he didn't knock any in. And that's the case with Scott Coolball. Any other day, chances are he'd be the offensive leader. Today he's shut out, doesn't have an RBI, and yet his team has 13 runs. But again, a sign of how deep Texas is. They score 13 without their big guy producing anything. Cesaric has come through with a couple of hits. But the guys down the lower part in the batting order, Lenny Bell, the first baseman, batting seventh. Scott Bryan inserted as the DH. Uh, Crockett, Crockett, the yeah. number eight hitter, and Brian Johnson has had a couple of hits. Crockett's had two hits, so Johnson. So they've produced down the bottom of the order. Hit hard to right center field, and in for a base hit. Cool ball's first hit. Cesaric on his way to third. 
And Texas with runners at first and third with two men out. So Scott Kubal gets his first hit of the ball game. The 13th hit of the game for Texas. One thing we've talked about repeatedly today with the Texas hitters, and actually all of the hitters, their ability to go the other way with the pitch. Watch Scott Kubal right here. Takes that ball to right center field. One of the sins of young hitters, <laughs> and hitters in general, is trying to pull the outside pitch. That's universal, little league to big leagues. These guys have all done a good job, really, of taking the ball the other way when it's on the outside part of the plate. And here's the DH. Bryant, he's walked twice and had three hits, three for three, and has gone very well to right field. Good curveball from Oquist. With that hit by Coolball, that leaves Todd Haney as the only Texas player in the ball game without a base hit. Haney is on the on-deck circle. Zarek, the runner at third, Coolball at first with two men out. Fastball foul tip back. Texas leading 13 to six. We're in the top half of the ninth inning and Todd Haney saying, one more try. I don't want to be the only guy without a hit. They'll be on me for the next three days. Freshman, Scott Bryant. Swings the bat real well. The end of the game hitting 250. Looks more like a 350 hitter. There's a young Butch Weiniger right there, that <laughs> shot. Mike Oquist. Breaking ball on the ground. Oquist stabs it. And Oquist pitches three shutout innings for Arkansas. Does a good job. We go to the bottom half of the ninth inning of game three with Texas leading 13 to 6. <laughs> bottom half of the ninth inning. Texas trying to close it out. Looking for their fifth win in six meetings with Arkansas. Coming up next after this ball game's over, we go to Sports Center. We'll update you on all the doings in sports today. Then back out here to Rosenblatt Stadium for game four, the final game of the first round of the NCAA College World Series. Stanford against Georgia. John Sanders, Joe Morgan, and Tim Brando will be standing by to bring you all the action. Her ball is fouled back. This is Jim Kramer, the first baseman. He's done some outstanding hitting. He's been the hero for Arkansas. If you can have a hero in a losing effort like this, had two hits, five RBIs. Had a double off the top of the right field wall. Missed a grand slam by about six inches. And what a job. Again, uh, one of these ball games with a big score, 13 to 6, where pitching has been overlooked. But don't overlook the efforts of Mark Petkaisek. Came on in relief in the second inning. Has allowed two runs, only one earned. Given up just four hits in six in the third innings. And he's still got good stuff out there, throwing hard. 13 game winner. Junior from Beaumont, Texas. On the ground foul. Tim Brando, you're downstairs. What's going on in the Texas dugout? Sam and Jim, if you're looking for a silver lining for Kevin Garner, though he did give up four runs in this game and went out in the second inning, they only pitched a few pitches, and that means that he'll be able to come back, and I talked with Cliff Gustafson, he'll start him on the Wednesday game. Of course, you'll have Krippner on Tuesday night in the winner's bracket to contest. Got him on a breaking ball. Petkaisek picks up the strikeout. Pet Kaisek has shown us a live fastball, good slider, and watch that off-speed pitch right there, a changeup. Good changeup that goes down right at the end, late break. Caught a lot of the Arkansas hitters out in front. That's the fifth strikeout for Pet Kaisek. Now, if Texas plays on Tuesday night in the winner's bracket, if they win, they wouldn't have to come back until Thursday night. So it would be even more rest. Uh, he could go and have the option of Garner or Pet Kaisek. Again, but uh, the way Cliff Gustafson has been going, I would imagine uh, Garner would be the choice, but there's Pet Kaisek ready again. He would be well rested. Start moving into the second round, Sam, of the double elimination tournament. You begin to see the teams that have the pitching depth. We know LSU has pitching depth, and now you see with the Texas staff, they're going to win this ball game, and they still have plenty of 
power out on the mound to come back with. Andy Skeels bounces it to Todd Haney. Two men out. Skeels, the cleanup man for Arkansas, has been kept quiet. 0 for 4 in the ball game. Two men out. Todd Haney. Well, he didn't get a hit in the ball game. He'll go 0 for every game in this series if his team can score 13 <laughs> runs and win. I'll assure you of that. These guys want that championship ring. They don't care too much about batting averages and earned run averages. Here's the DH, Troy Eklund for Arkansas. Once again, Ryan Johnson, we're going to have to chip in and get him a new mask. He's thrown a couple away, and he's still having trouble with the one he's got on now. Mark Petkaisek. Fastball hit in the air, short right center is going to drop for a base hit. Second hit for Troy Eklund in the ball game. Oh, with these control problems that the Arkansas pitchers have had today, talk about Johnson's mask. Maybe they could start using the masks that the hockey goalies wear, you know, that have all the painted symbols and everything on. You could come up with some kind of a target to help your concentration get the ball to the strike zone. It'd be worth a try. Five hits off Mark Petkaisek. He's pitched seven innings. There's the shortstop, Mike Sisko. And they have the catcher's glove now with a fluorescent right to help you zone in a little bit better. That's a good one. Fastball, that's a base hit into right field. Eklund around second. It gets away from Cesarek, but the runners hold. Eklund had an idea. Obviously, in a close game, he, might, he would have been going. But here down by seven runs no sense going so two soft hits the opposite way for Arkansas puts runners in first and second with two men out and Don Thomas the third baseman steps in he's 0 for 3 nine hits in the game for Arkansas Arkansas led briefly scored two runs in the bottom of the fourth to take a 6-5 lead up the middle, past the pitcher, Petkaisek. Knocked down by Haney, the play is second, not in time. What an effort by Todd Haney. It's an infield single for Don Thomas. <laughs> so a couple of Texas leaders, uh, uh, leaguers and a ground ball single, and the bases are loaded. Should call these Arkansas leaguers, I guess. <laughs> I think Petkaisek thinks he should have had that ball, and he should have. The ball was not hit as hard as he thought. Great sliding stop by Haney. Example of what Gustafson said. Beginning of this season, he said, I don't think I can live with Todd Haney at second base, but he has shown more improvement than any player he's ever had defensively. Here's Rod Moore, two for three in the game with two singles. That pitch is down low. So with two men out, Arkansas getting three singles to load the bases. Now, if there was nobody out, I guess there might be some Concern in the Texas dugout. Uh, with two men out, Texas pretty safe here. And Kaiser goes to the fastball. And in the on deck circle for Arkansas is a man uh, who's hit so very well for them all season long, but has a broken left hand. That's number 20 you saw in the background, Randy Bob. Interesting to see if he comes up, if he gets a chance to hit. There's Randy Bob. In the Southwest Conference tournament, he was hit by a pitch and broke the small bone in his left hand. Kept him out since then. Fastball on the ground to Haney at second. This should do it. Over to Bell, and the ball game is over. The Longhorns of Texas getting some solid pitching from Mark Ted Kaisek, who came on in the second inning in relief of Kevin Garner, have defeated the Razorbacks of Arkansas by the score of 13 to 6. Texas goes to the winner's bracket, and Arkansas has to come back tomorrow night in the loser's bracket. Disappointing day for them, said they're a better ball club than this, but when your pitchers don't throw strikes, makes your whole team look bad. Very encouraging for Gustafson, as Tim Brando pointed out. Kevin Garner with a bad day. Pat Kaiser comes in, has a great effort now. Garner is available next week along with their ace, Kurt Krippner. So the Longhorns are in great shape. Arkansas, of course, has to win tomorrow. They're going home. 
Real good production for the Texas Longhorns from the bottom of the lineup. They break the game open with four in the fifth and four in the sixth and win it 13 to six. We'll be right back. Mercury introduces a new friend, Tracer. With 68 standard features, it's all there when you need it. Mercury, the shape you want to be in. Like many before, you came here asking for just one thing. Shadowski, Shibosky. A chance. You're gonna make it here, cause you do make America work, and this time's for you. Here's to you. Beetwood Age for that clean, crisp taste hey, Sid. that says Budweiser. This Bud's for you. When his team, the El Segundo Eagles, lost the 1970 state final, George Brett didn't lose his desire. He didn't give up, because George Brett has always had a will to win. And he's always had a Wilson. Texas beats Arkansas for the fifth time in six meetings this season. They win it 13 to 6. Coming up next, right here on ESPN, we'll take you to Sports Center. A full recap of the day's doings in the world of sports and a lot of action. NBA playoffs, boxing, look at baseball, and everything else going on. Then right back out here to Rosenblatt Stadium where John Sanders and Joe Moore.